Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for supporting the show. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the cool news for this episode. Over at PC World in their Linux security blog, Linux Grinch vulnerability could put a hole in your security stocking. The Grinch may be snatching away some year-end holiday time, forcing Linux system administrators to fill a gaping security hole in their systems. Named after the proverbially grumpy Dr. Seuss character, the Grinch vulnerability could affect all Linux systems, potentially providing attackers with unfettered root access, according to a security service provider, Alert Logic, which introduced Grinch to the world Tuesday via a blog post. So I haven't had a chance to look really super closely at uh, what is entailed here. However, uh, this post here says that it could be as severe as the Shellshock Linux flaw. Um, and basically, it, uh, the fundamental flaw resides in the Linux authorization system, which can inadvertently allow privilege escalation, granting a user root or full administrative access. So this is potentially not, <laughs> not a good thing. Uh, so we'll be keeping an eye on this to see how things uh, progress, and we'll probably report some more on it on the next episode. So from uh, MarketWired.com, the Linux Foundation has announced its biannual individual membership drive and a new $100 certification discount for members. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Linux Foundation is a nonprofit organization dedicated to accelerating the growth of Linux and collaborative development. They have today announced its biannual individual membership drive in which the organization will donate $25 to FreeGeek for each new member who joins today through January 16th, 2015 at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time. Individual members of the Linux Foundation help advance the Linux operating system and support the work of Linux creator Linus Torvalds. Free Geek is a nonprofit organization focused on reusing and recycling computer equipment that might otherwise end up as hazardous waste. Its refurbished computers are granted to schools, community organizations, and sold in the Free Geek thrift store. So, anyway, definitely check it out. Uh, something uh, interesting for sure. From ZDNet, say hi to Linux's future. Fedora 21 is here. This is from Stephen J. Von Nichols in his Linux and open source blog. It's in Fedora that Red Hat explores the cutting edge of Linux and open source software. He starts uh, his blog post as saying, developments, while not everyone will like where Fedora is going, for example, Fedora's init system, system D, Still has a lot of detractors. Myself, personally, I'm not a huge fan, although it's not a, you know, a hill I'm about to die on. Uh, it's still the bellwether for Linux. And if a software library or program isn't in Fedora, at some point, it's not likely to ever show up in mainstream Linux. Now, that much is true. Uh, the latest Fedora, which has been the case for the last few updates, arrived a bit late. Nevertheless, it works well. Instead of focusing on the desktop, as was once the case, Fedora now comes in three different variants, Fedora 21 Cloud, Fedora 21 Server, and Fedora 21 Workstation. Each is meant to meet a specific use case, however, they all share in a common base set of packages, which include the brand new Linux 3.18 kernel, RPM, YUM, SystemD, and the Anaconda installer. So according to Red Hat, this small stable set of components allows for a solid foundation upon which to base Fedora. So he then provides a rundown of the various other uh, uh, items for each edition, cloud, server, workstation, etc. Definitely check it out if you are looking at going with the latest version of Fedora. From LinuxPlanet.com, Linux 3.19 features set to surface in 2015. 
So Linux 3.19 will be the first new Linux kernel of 2015, and it's already shaping up to be chock full of interesting bits. The merge window for Linux 3.19 hasn't yet closed, but the first set of Git pulls show lots of activity. So uh, human interface devices get a boost in this release cycle. Uh, Microsoft Surface Pro is among those, so kind of cool. Um, ARM will be uh, getting a boost with support for CoreSight, which provides support for on-ship debugging and tracing operations. And across the board, there are some ACPI and power management updates that will benefit Linux users. So pretty interesting. Definitely check it out. From shacknews.com, Warhammer Quest levels up to a PC, Mac, and Linux release. This is why we're even talking about this. Warhammer Quest is making the jump from iOS to PCs, Macs, and Linux on January 7th, 7th 2015. Uh, Chilled Mouse, the developer of uh, the game, has announced in partnership with Games Workshop and Rodeo Games. A mass, as massive fans of the Warhammer universe, we have spent our development time working with Rodeo Games and focusing on what made Warhammer Quest such a great tabletop game, said Ayn Beaverstock, director of Chilled Mouse with truly unique hero, hero characters, epic role-playing action, awesome loot, and randomly generated dungeons, Warhammer Quest is a true digital incarnation of its namesake. So, uh, pretty cool. Definitely check it out uh, if you're a Warhammer player. Uh, myself, personally, not so much. I actually don't really have a lot of time to play game games, but uh, still pretty neat nonetheless. From LinuxGizmos.com, a newborn mini ITX twins run Linux on Bay Trail system on chips. This is really neat. I'm a huge fan of those tiny little Linux computers. Uh, Aeon launched two mini ITX boards powered by Intel Bay Trail system on chips and featuring up to three video ports, one or two gigabit Ethernet ports, PCI Express expansion, and more. Um, Linux Gizmos missed their Atom E3800 based EMB BT1 uh, mini ITX motherboard when it was announced earlier this year, so they're including it as part of this release, or as part of this press release. Um, basically, uh, there are two Atom and Celeron based, their 6.7 by 6.7 inch mini ITX boards. Uh, the new EMB B2 and somewhat lower powered EMB BT4 will both ship later this month with Fedora Linux support at unstated prices. Um, applications are said to include panel PCs, slim PCs, kiosks, uh, point-of-sale devices, etc. This, these types of boards are very popular for that sort of thing. So definitely check it out if you're looking for a very small version of Linux or a very small piece of hardware that can run Linux. From Gamasutra.com, Metro Redux launches for Linux and SteamOS. This is pretty cool. 4A Games and Deep Silver have released the dedicated Linux versions of Metro 2033 Redux and Metro Last Night, Last Light Redux. Boy, blah, 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 having trouble talking today. On Steam today and in celebration, fans can snatch the award-winning titles for 50% off the regular price. Both games support Steam Play, meaning that owners of any Steam version will automatically find the respective game added to their Windows PC and Linux Steam libraries. The titles were developed in-house at 4A Games, who have once again pushed the boundaries of native Linux gaming. Pretty awesome. Definitely check it out. All right, that will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes which you can find online over at uh, Linux or over at quicksurf.com. used to be linux.quicksurf.com, but that now redirects. Um, and with that, I just want to make a quick little announcement. Um, I've been doing some work under the covers, behind the scenes. Uh, with this run, hopefully uh, this particular episode, um, Linux News Log will be produced almost exclusively with uh, FFmpeg only. So uh, there will be just a couple of touch points where I, I, you know, need to use another piece of software. But for the most part, um, it will be uh, produced using uh, FFmpeg, which is nice because it's open source software. So I just thought I would announce that for those of you in the Linux community that 
I know I get a lot of email <laughs> from <laughs> from listeners for railing on me because I don't use uh, open source software for everything, but uh, it's been a long time in coming, and you know there have been uh, a variety of issues that have prevented it. Mainly, just I need to be productive, but um, I think I finally got things to the point where I can produce a whole show and I have the whole workflow where it's all automated and 100% FFmpeg based. So uh, definitely uh, pretty cool and uh, looking forward to uh, using this new workflow for lots of other stuff too. So anyway, I just thought I'd make that quick announcement. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. The next episode will be episode 21 of season 17. It will be the last episode of 2014. The next episode will be season 18, episode one, uh, the first week of January. So uh, I'll see you uh, after that. See you then. Bye.